Hi and welcome to Home Assistant running on Synology inside the Docker. Today we will be installing password manager called Vault Warden. We'll start in a couple of seconds. As always, before we go any further, I really would like to thank all the members who have joined my channel. Thank you for all of your support. And also, I would like to thank everybody who watched, liked or subscribed to my channel. Thank you! And now, let's get started with today's video. There are a lot of password managers. Some are very famous, others are, well, unfortunately famous because there were some leaks with them. Others, I wouldn't trust my password. So the question is, what password manager can you choose? The best option for us would be self-hosted version of the password manager. Bitwarden is a commercial product that you can buy or subscribe to or implement as an enterprise solution. But as I said, we will be looking at the open source version, which has changed name from BitTorrent RS to WaltTorrent a couple of weeks ago, and we will be implementing WaltTorrent in our private cloud. Why? Because we want to keep all our data private in terms of not letting anybody else host them. For more information about the Vault Warden, you can always check up the Git repository and the link to that repository will be in the description of the video. And as I said, we will be implementing this on our Synology inside Docker. But if you are running Docker on any other version of operating system, you can also follow this guide. The steps will be different because for this installation we will be using Synology's user interface, Docker user interface. In the description of the video you will also find a command that you can type in a terminal to download and install Vault Warden. The installation is pretty straightforward and we will do it in a couple of seconds. So let's switch to Synology. Let me try and answer one question before anybody asks it. So why am I not using? an add-on from Home Assistant called Bitwarden or Vault Warden. There are a lot of plugins or add-ons for Home Assistant that are really useful and complement the Home Assistant as is. But I see no point of using Password Manager or having Password Manager inside the smart home application. So, yes, you can host it and if you are using Supervised, the easiest method for you probably is to install it as add-on, but I am not using it, I haven't installed it like that and I will not be installing it like that. But on the other hand, if you do want to have your password manager inside Home Assistant for whatever reason, I don't see it, but maybe you do, you can always have your own private cloud version of it external to Home Assistant and still, by using the panel iframe, have it listed on the left side here. And as I said, I didn't do it because I really see no purpose or no point in keeping password manager here. I have it on my desktop computer, I have it on my mobile phone, and I think that that is sufficient. In Synology, go to registry and type here Vault Warden. As you can see, this one is not used anymore. Instead, we will be using Vault Warden server. Let's double click on it. Select latest and wait for it to finish downloading. While it is downloading, let's go to File Station and create here a new folder called Vault Warden. Okay. And now that image has been downloaded, let's double click on it, select a name. Go to Advanced Settings, enable Auto Restart. By enabling Auto Restart, we are telling our system to restart container if it crashes for whatever reason. Also, if we lose power and the system boots up, we will also be making sure that our Docker image or Docker container is running. For volume, add folder and let's select the folder we just created called Vault Warden. We want to map it with the data folder. Network, we will leave it in bridge mode. And for the port settings, there are two ports, 
that is port 3012, and also port 80. Port 80 is used to access the server via the web interface. Unfortunately, we cannot use that port, so we have to map it to something else. Here you can put any number, just make sure that that number isn't occupied already. So instead of 80, I will be putting 8880. And now my web interface will be on that port. Links we will leave as is, environment also as is, and we just now need to press apply. Now press next, confirm settings, and that's it. Docker will now start. Let's go to containers. And as you can see, our server has started and it's been running for one minute. The next step is to configure reverse proxy. For that, we need to go to control panel, application portal, reverse proxy, and we will create a new entry here. Let's press on create. Just to avoid something that I always forget, we'll go to custom header and press here, create WebSocket. Okay. Now we need to fill in the necessary information. So first I'll give it a name. Next we want to ensure that we are using HTTPS protocol on the port 443 for the host name. For example, this can be Vault Warden mydomain.com. I will enable HSTS and HTTP2 and we will forward all the traffic that is incoming to the protocol HTTP, the host where our Bitwarden is located, and the port we previously specified was 8880. Now we have created a new reverse proxy rule called Vault Warden that will be listening on the external domain name vaultwardenmydomain.com on the port 443 with the protocol HTTPS. And internally, inside our network, it will be forwarding that traffic to the host name we specified here and the port we've written below. This will allow us to keep our instance of Bitwarden or Vault Warden without SSL, while we make sure that all the external traffic is encrypted. Next thing that we did was custom header, and this is used to allow WebSocket connections. If you have WebSocket issues, in the description of the video, you will find a link to a guide that can help you set up WebSockets with the Vault Warden. Let me just press OK here. This is now created. The next thing that you have to do is create certificate. If you do not have a wildcard certificate, that will match this domain name. Let's go to security, certificate, and let's add new certificate. I will not be finishing this task because this is my recording Synology device and I already have other Synology device that has valid certificate, but I will guide you what to do here. Press add, select add new certificate, we will be using certificate from Let's Encrypt, we will be typing here a domain name. Domain name in our case would be vault warden .mydomain.com. You would need to type here your mail address and the next line called subject alternative name can be used to specify additional domain names if you need SSL certificate for them. For example, other.mydomain.com thirdmydomain.com etc. And now when you press apply, a new certificate will be issued by the Let's Encrypt that will cover this Vault Warden domain name or subdomain. And as I said, I will not be finishing this task. So I press cancel. And what is the last step you have to do to assign the certificate to domain name or subdomain? You have to press on configure and here in the list select the new certificate. Yes, of course, I have only this default one, but if you did create a new certificate, that certificate would be listed down below. So select that and press OK. And by doing all those steps, you are ensuring that your Vault Warden is using SSL certificate for all external traffic. OK, 
Now let's try an open Vault Warden. When you type in the IP address of your Synology, with the port 8880 in my case, or port that you have selected during the setup, you should be greeted with this welcome page. If you have created a subdomain, vaultwarden.whatever, you can try open it on that address. There you do not need to specify the port because the traffic will be automatically forwarded to the port you previously specified. So what we need to do is we need to create account. Here we need to type in our email address, your name, master password, password hint, yeah right, and of course tick the box after you have read the terms of service and the privacy policy. Submit. My account has been created. OK. And we are almost done. Now we just need to log in to our system. And this is it. We now have secure connection to our Vault Warden. And next step for you is to download any clients you may need. For example, desktop, you have Windows, Mac OS, Linux. These are the web browsers. You have option of either using the iOS version or Android version, command line tools, web sockets, etc. And that's it. As I said, if you are not running Synology and want to install it via the Docker, I will be posting a command line down in the description of the video that you have to type in inside your terminal. And this is it. All you have to do after installing all the applications is to import the data from any previous password manager that you use. That can be Firefox one, Google one, or some commercial version of it. And you will now have your own password manager hosted in your own cloud. I really do hope that you did enjoy this video and that you did find it useful. If you have any kind of a comment or a question, you can always find me on the Discord server, but feel free to leave a comment down in the comment section below. If you still haven't subscribed, Please subscribe and hit the bell button so you get notified on the future updates. If you did like this video, please give me a thumbs up because it not just means a lot to me, but it also helps with the YouTube algorithms. And I'll be seeing you next time. Until then, bye bye and have fun.